Hello YouTube friends, Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Some of you have asked me about pre-filters. Uh, where do I get them from? Why do I use them? Uh, that kind of thing. Let's go ahead and get into it right now. I'm gonna show you why I use pre-filters. Let's go. If you're new to the channel and you like uh, learning about how to take better care of your fish, just like me, always learning, uh, be sure to hit that bell and hit that uh, hit that sub button so you are always notified when I have new content, okay? Let's go ahead and get into pre-filter. This is my 60-gallon uh, grow-out tank. Used to be referred to as uh, hashtag Juvie Hap Nation. I used to grow out haps in this tank and, and it was also kind of a shout out to the hashtag Hap Nation that used to belong to Evan Alexander. The inquisitive fish guy. Now this is more like a Lethronops tank, really. I have a couple pre-filters, one on the right and one on the left, you can see here, on the intakes of Sun Sun 302 filters, smaller units. There's old Photoshop, my red cap. And I also have a, um, a pre-filter, a very large one on the intake of a Fluval FX6 in the 100 gallon acrylic, which is directly across from the 60 gallon. It's a pretty big, pretty big sponge. Helps to keep the uh, this tank pretty uh, pristine. But that's not really why, or really the only reason why I, I recommend and use pre-filters. The real reason is this. This canister was last opened about four months ago. And when I crack it open here, you'll see the condition it's in. You can see there, that's not, that's not really in bad shape. This canister could have run probably another month, maybe even two. I have some biohome and some sponge-filled plastic balls in that top, in that top basket. You can see the water quality there. That's not bad. I've certainly opened up canisters that looked a lot worse than that. That middle tray there has uh, some marine marine pure. And of course, I, I rinse everything in tank water. You can see the water there. It's, uh, it's got some detritus in it for sure, but it's not that real murky, horrible looking uh, stuff you can see when you open up a canister sometimes. Of course, the real test will be in the sponges because that's the first place the water goes through after it comes down from the tank. I have a sheet of uh, pinky floss there. You can see it's pretty, uh, pretty gunked up. But the sponges, the sponges look pretty good. I have, of course, the uh, the coarse, medium, and fine sponge line up there in that bottom tray, and uh, that pinky floss that usually has to go because it gets clogged up pretty good. But look at that. That's not bad at all. That's the that's the fine. There's the medium. I mean, those are really in good shape. And take a look at the course, just a little bit of gunk on it. And there's the water. Yeah, there's some detritus in there. Not, not that much, though. Here's the pre-filter. What I do with these pre-filters is I just, I just give them a little bit of a rinse. And then I just store them in, in, in a clean bucket of tank water, just like I do with the rest of the media. Now, whether or not you really have to do that or not, uh, whether you want to safeguard the beneficial bacteria in the sponges, that's really up to you. I don't think it's that big a deal, really, when you consider that all of this rock work and artificial plants and substrate, all of that really is providing a home to beneficial bacteria. So I've refilled the, um, after, after cleaning everything and rinsing out the sponges, I've refilled the uh, canister with some tank water. And here's a tip for you. Be you should uh, use a, a permanent marker if you have one of these smaller sun suns. That way you'll know how to line up your uh, intake tubes so that your baskets and the uh, motor unit are, are placed correctly. If not, it can get a little bit confusing. Some of the bigger sun suns have stickers at the bottom that uh, at the bottom of the UV light hole, you know, and you can see those. But if everything is seated correctly, the top just pops on and uh, is nice and secure. And this canister is good to go and probably will not need to be reopened again for four, between four and six months. That's why I use pre-filters, because the more time 
that I spend actually working on the tank, the less time I'm enjoying actually looking at the fish and enjoying the tanks themselves. So if I can minimize the amount of time I'm spending in maintenance and not compromise or cut corners in the, uh, in the quality of the conditions that I'm putting the fish in, that's a good thing. And so pre-filters have allowed me to do that. They've allowed me to extend the amount of time uh, between maintenance on canisters. And canisters for me are the uh, type of filter that that really requires the most the most work, the most labor. You know, you're you're lugging things around, you're pulling things out, rinsing, pull, you know, filling buckets, putting things back together, refilling the canister, firing it up again, priming it, all that good stuff. Uh, very different from a hang on back where you just reach in, pull out, put back in, uh, or even a sump for that matter. They are they are more labor intensive, and for that reason, if I can uh, add something to them that that helps them to do a better job and uh, and gives me a little more time uh, in this case I could probably go as much as five months maybe six months before that canister would really look uh, like it badly needs a cleaning this was a four month interval and uh, it was actually not in bad shape it, it, it had some detritus in there but I've opened up canisters that have looked a lot worse than that so I could you know, using that formula of dialing in your canisters, opening them up, checking them out, and closing them up again. I could go five months, unless I increase stock, in which case I, I would have to shorten that period. Or if I, or if I um, decrease stock, I mean, this is very lightly stocked now, but if I was to decrease stock, I could go longer, right? As I've said before, it's a fluid type of situation. All right, pun intended. So uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Be sure to uh, visit on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific for the Cichlids and Coffee live stream where I get to interact with you on a uh, live you know, Q&A type basis, which I enjoy a lot. And uh, be sure to hit that sub button and the bell if you like the content on this channel. Thank you so much, and I'll, I'll see you next time.